Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Trevor Horn. This is B Varsity Live for Thursday, October 18th. We are in the downtown TBC studios, brought to you by Grapevine MSP and Motor City Buick GMC. It is now time to talk to the Kennedy Thunderbirds, and it's a lot of fun because tomorrow night's action at Shafter. Uh, it, both teams are 8-0, 4-0 in SSL. Top two teams, you could throw Carruthers in there. They're also undefeated, but they definitely don't have the strength of schedule these two teams have. So we're talking about Division 5 bragging rights. The winner likely will be the number one seed in Division 5 playoffs that are announced on October 27th. But more so, this game is just going to be a lot of fun to watch and be a part of. So we bring in quarterback David Estrada, senior, head coach Mario Milan, and cornerback mm -hmm. One side of the football for you guys, Johnny Carrillo down here on the end. Mario, I want to start with you first. We sure. talked about this about a month ago when we came up after you guys beat Madera Liberty Ranchos. Actually, mm -hmm. we did that before that game. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm so amazed about how you were able to have a football team where you can allow guys to just play one side of the field at a small school like Kennedy. Um, you've been a part of this staff. You saw what Dennis Moody's able to do. How mm -hmm. are you guys able to do this at such a small school when you look, especially at the team that you're going to play tomorrow night with Shafter, where almost every dude goes both ways on that team? Well, you know, first of all, it, it took a lot for our guys to kind of, you know, swallow some of their pride because we have a lot of guys. Johnny's run the ball a couple of times. He runs the ball great for us. Um, but they had to understand that for us to compete for a long season, we had to make sure we were, we we're healthy. We had good, fresh legs. And so, you know, early in January, we started talking about our guys, about where we, fit, where we feel they fit. And obviously some of them want to try other things, but they understood that the giant scheme of things for our team, uh, the best bet for us, we explained to them, you know, we need to be healthy in the fourth quarter. We need to be healthy in November. And, 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 and so the only way to do that is that you have to have less reps. And so, you know, I know it, our guys have understood it. They've kind of embraced it. Um, they kind of understand where they belong in, in our team, and, and they're they're all okay with it. To my, I mean, to, to my knowledge, they're all okay. With it. I'm sure they'd want to do other things, but but they understand it's best for the program. David, how much fun has this year been for you guys? When you think about it, before we get, you guys got to realize that this program, when it started out in 2009, went three years without a win. It was a 30 game losing streak. And then two and nine, they got a couple wins on the board, and they went winless again in 2013. And then Dennis Moody comes in, revamps the whole coaching staff, and they win the Division Six title in 2014, 2015. They move up to D5. They go to the semifinals two years in a row, finish with six identical six and six records. And now here they are, school record, you know, looking for a school record in wins tomorrow. And I tie for a school record in wins. They've already eclipsed a school record for league wins in a season. So, David, when you hear all those numbers and you know about the history of this program and you know about what's happened the last four years, how excited do you be a part of this situation and this game this week uh, with probably the biggest regular season game this school's ever dealt with? It's exciting. It's uh, very, how can I say, it brings joy to yourself because especially to me, knowing that I get to lead these group of guys and, you know, be a role model and, you know, all of us, we got like the city on our back, you know, we have people coming in buying tickets for the game. So it's very excited and very something new to us, but we're very, very looking forward to it this Friday. Johnny, what about you? I mean, when you look at all the excitement that's going on with this game, it, and really it is still a regular season game. It's not the playoffs, but you guys are playing for something maybe a little bit more this week than you have been in weeks past or in years past, um, other than those two championship games, which were your, the last one was your freshman year. Were you guys yeah. part of either yeah. one of those? Yes, I think yeah, you guys were both on varsity, yeah. 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 Um, for you, I mean, how big is this one for you and your family and your friends and your teachers? You know, it's big for all of us, for the players, the, our families, the city, because, you know, we're pl not only playing for ourselves, we're also playing for the city and we're playing for a league title. And we have a statement to make and we just got to go in there and do our job. But it's pretty uh, exciting and awesome to be a part of it because, you know, we're, make, we're trying to make history this year and keep it going. Mario, for you as a head coach, when you look at, you know, the SSL is finally back to where mm -hmm. the original uh, kind of uh, conception of it was. It was supposed to be county teams. Nobody from Bakersfield, none of the, you know, the Kern High School District schools other than, you know, Shafter and Arvin, but like none of the city schools mm -hmm. were supposed to be in that league. It was supposed to be a county league. Um, for you, the way it's panned out with you guys, and with Shafter and Wasco, I mean, you guys had that tough game against Wasco yeah. where you had some 19-14. Uh, how much fun is it for you to see uh, the SSL play out the way it has this year and you guys to be a part of this kind of, you know, rise up? Um, I think it's great. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the season when we looked across the board, all the teams that were, that were there and who was coming back, we figured that, you know, every year in and year out, now it's going to be a shootout. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone has something to play for. Every game matters. Um, I even felt that at some point uh, uh, one loss could get you, still get you a league title. Um, there's the chance for a three-way three-way tie for the league title, and and so you, everyone knows that 
there are no games where you can just say, you know what, it's just a wash. It's not just get past that game. It's not going to matter. Um, now every game matters. And so I think that in terms of all of us, it's really raised all of us in terms of our coaching, in terms of what the, the players bring to the table. Because now at the beginning of every fall, you tell your kids, you know what, this league, this year, we could be league champs. And yeah. you really do mean it at that, at that moment. So I think competitive-wise, it's great for all the programs, for all the schools. Um, and I think it kind of, you know, it gives everyone really something to shoot for. Johnny, for you, I, I love the fact that you're on the show because you're going to be one of the guys that's going to be a big focal point in this game. Other than Highland, who I think threw 21 times against you guys when you guys beat him, nobody's throwing the ball against you guys. Uh, that's not the case tomorrow night with Alex Aguilar throwing the ball. So for you, uh, first off, who was scout team quarterback against you guys all week? Our, our second string quarterback, uh, Jose Cota, who's been our scout team because he's shifty and he kind of knows – how to run the ball. Yeah. So we're trying to uh, play him as the role of Alex Aguilar, and we use him for practice for scouting quarterback. And how excited are you to be able to test yourself tomorrow night, knowing that they're going to throw the ball likely more than anybody you've seen this year and you probably will see again? Yeah, I'm pretty excited because, uh, you know, it's it's a good matchup for me and the other secondary guys as well. And we, and we know they got a great group of wide receivers, so – it's just exciting to know that we're going to be tested and we're just got to, it's going to prove to ourselves uh, and see what we got. David, you're smiling. Why? I think he's upset that he said that Cota is a uh, pretty shifty athlete. <laughs> we couldn't use David in that scenario. but <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's got, he's got to run the first team offense. You don't want him overworked yeah. during the week. That's, so, that's probably the only reason why, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, speaking of Jose Cota, Jose Cota has a he has a real quick trigger and he throws the ball really well and very fast. He gets it off, gets out of his hands. So we figured that he would give us the best look we could possibly. Obviously, we're not going to simulate Alex Aguilar, but we thought that he would give us a really good look prepping for the for the night. And before I forget, we're pretty excited about what we're doing tomorrow night. We've got some issues here. I guess downtown they're going to shut off all the lights, PG&E is tomorrow night. So we've got an early deadline for our newspaper, which means we also probably won't be able to do the show. We wouldn't be able to do the show here in the studio tomorrow night, the post game. So we're actually going to do the post game show tomorrow night from the sidelines at Shaft or after your guys' game tomorrow night. So for us, it's exciting to bring the yeah. show out there tomorrow night. And I know it's going to be a big spectacle. Uh, Mario, do, do you know what you guys are doing in anticipation? Are you guys bringing a rooter bus down from school? down to Shafter. I know uh, Shafter is going to be is doing um, advanced ticket sales. Yes. Is there anything else you guys are doing? No, you know, we we, are, we travel well. Um, our, our, this has been a great year for us. Even the year that, that the year we won the Valley the second time and we went to that state game, uh, we had loads of buses that showed up there. We had more fans from Delano there that night than than uh, the, the home team did. And Dude, so that's our, a our, trip down yeah, the Saddleback. Yeah, our, our fans travel. Uh, they'll be there. They'll be in full force. Our band will be there. We have a great you know, cheer squad. So we're really excited. This is, I told those guys, this is the biggest game at, at this division. It's going to be a, a great atmosphere. Um, and we love the fact that we're traveling. I mean, it's great. I, 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 our guys, we talk about adversity all the time and me putting those situations to have to prove yourself and prove who you are. And I mean, where else to do it than in, in a hostile environment against a phenomenal team. So, you know, it's just cha challenges and we love them. And so we'll, we'll be there in full force. Uh, we hope they leave some seats for us. I know there'll be a lot of people from Shafter there. Um, and I hope they have I hope they leave a seat for me. Exactly. <laughs> hope they leave us some seats so we can get our fans in. Uh, so it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. David, for you, um, how does Kennedy be successful tomorrow night? Uh, just put a bunch of points on the board, just like we always do. Our offenses, you know, we try to be a machine and try, you know, move the ball as much as we can and score as much as we can. And we know that Shaft is a good defense. You know, we've seen that they've been leaving teams to zero, seven, you know. And, but we're excited. Just like you said, we're excited and we're ready for whatever the outcome and any situation that comes to us. Well, that's the biggest thing is that, you know, you guys are an offense that's predicated on the run. Tyreek Walker's got 1,203 rushing yards, 15 touchdowns, but you found him a bunch. I think two mm -hmm. touchdowns you found him with. He's got almost 200 yards receiving, almost half of your receiving yards. Uh, Yokani Sandoval came back from that injury, missed one game, still 588 yards, nine touchdowns. Francisco Medina, 500 yards. So, Mario, you, you know, you lean on a bunch of dudes. You lean on this guy a lot because mm -hmm. people don't realize that in a triple option offense, be able to find the right guy knowing which seam is going to be there it's predicated on him at the sure. line of scrimmage for you with him at, at quarterback how much of the offense really runs through David uh, David's at the point now where he can run it on his own if he had to and he can correct it and fix it and, and put the guys in the right spots if we lined up wrong or he'll know if a play came in you know and uh, uh, called wrong 
Uh, David's been around with us since he was in eighth grade. His brother was on our original group of guys that won the Valley title. So he's been around us. He knows us. Uh, we're, at a, we're so comfortable with David that, you know, we can let him know this is what we need to get done, and, and we'll do it. A lot of times, you know, in our scout team, when David does run our scout, I just tell him what I need to see, and he kind of calls it himself and does it. So, you know, when it comes to football, he's a foot high football IQ. Uh, so we have a lot of faith in him. Uh, when he tells us something that he sees, he's usually right. And so we kind of lean on him a lot to take care of what the, the things that we can't take care of that are on the field. Uh, so he'll come back and let us know. And, he's even, and also the, one of, the, one of greatest, David's greatest attributes is the fact that he's very even keel. Um, he's not too high, he's not too low, you know, and so he's always right in the game and involved with what's going on. So we do count on him a lot, and he knows it. He knows yeah. the pressure we put on him. I like to keep the comment section on Facebook up. Um, who goes by Gus? Gus? Uh, uh, some kid at school. One of oh, our okay. friends. One of All right. friends. <laughs> so then uh, you remember Marcus Garza? He says, what's up, Dane Mario, 88 Tiger quarterback. Yeah. So, I mean, Delano's in your blood, man, yeah. and that's the biggest thing. Is Like, for you, um, and I know you want to bring Kennedy to the yeah. forefront and get another section title for this program, get a shot at state, obviously, for you guys. But really, um, does your alliance – kind of live with the city of Delano too, making sure, because you you know you did some great things with Delano High and then you moved over. Uh, right. How much of that is just getting Delano football, the city, you know, staying where it is with well, three you know, small schools like this? I, I played in Delano and, and I coached there in the mid-90s, left for a while and was here in Bakersfield, then I went back. And so what I do know is that for a lot of years, Bakersfield, I mean, uh, Delano didn't get any respect when it came to football. You could mm -hmm. talk all you want about where you, where you played and where you came from, but when it came to the conversation of Delano football, uh, other than the 70s, uh, there isn't much to say. And so for me, it's, it, it makes me proud when we go around and people are not talking about us, asking us what we do, who we are. Uh, you guys, we walk around, we wear, you know, we're proud to wear our K's and walk around and say, hey, you're a Kennedy. And so it's really good. It's great for the town. It's great for the city. Uh, the city. Everyone comes out and watches. us. We have a great facility. And so uh, we're finally, I feel like we're finally getting on the map with all the programs. You know, Travis had a great couple of years. Uh, we had a couple of good years at Delano in the past. And so I think we're finally at a point now where people think of Delano, they're not thinking of just a gimme game. Uh, they're thinking about some good football programs and, some, and, and good football being played uh, in that town. So, you know, it's, it's entertaining. We try to put, put it on the, on the field and we want people to come out and watch. And I feel like now we're finally where people are starting to recognize us and who we are. Johnny, one, uh, one last question. A win tomorrow night, what does that mean for you in this football program? It means a lot because, you know, we'll make school history, we're going 9-0, and we'll try to keep that going. And then we have a league title under our belt, so that'll be great if we get the win. And then we could possibly may, uh, go be the first team in Kennedy school history to go 10-0 and if we get past Travis. And, but we just got to get past this week to make that happen. Gentlemen, I'm really excited about it. I, I'm happy to go up there. I'm glad that we're doing the post game show there tomorrow night. I look forward to it, and I know it's you know I can't tell if it's going to be a defensive battle yeah. or if it's going to be an offensive battle, man. Something's mm -hmm. going to happen, and it's going to be an electric game, electric atmosphere. So I appreciate you guys coming down, being a part of the show today. Good luck, David Estrada, Mario Milan, Johnny Carrillo. Thank you guys. Good luck tomorrow night. We'll see you then. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Right, appreciate thank you. it, guys. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to do our preview and prediction. Josh Bennett and John Menace are going to come on. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned.